Hello, my dear class six students, welcome back. So today we are going to start a new chapter. That is chapter eight, body movement, okay? Body movement. And this you can find in page 66 and between 66 and 78, okay? So you can refer the textbook as well, clear? Now, uh, students, uh, this body movement is a repetition of what you have studied uh, about uh, human body in class five. Do you remember this chapter, which you have studied in human uh, class five, human body? Clear. Now, in this body movement, the first part, the first part of this chapter, we are going to study about the uh, human body. Clear. The movement in human in human being. Clear. And the second one, in the second part, we'll study about other animals like uh, earthworm. Earthworm. Clear. Now, snail, snack, clear. Fish, bird, and cockroach. Clear. So, in the first part of this chapter, we'll study about the human body, which, uh, which is exactly the same as what you have studied in your class five. So we'll not go much in details, clear. And the second part of this chapter will study about the movements in other uh, animals. So uh, these are the name of the animals which we will study, okay? So I'm giving you a highlight about this chapter, what we are going to study, clear? Okay, so students, the first topic that today we'll study would be movement and locomotion, okay? Movement and locomotion. Movement and locomotion. Now, see, movement and locomotion, these two are similar, but these are, this is different, okay? It's kind of similar, but now the difference between this movement and locomotion is, movement means if we are moving any parts of our body, okay? If we are moving any parts of our body without changing, without, without changing the position, okay? Without changing the position or location, then it is movement, clear. Now, uh, you know, you can just roll your eyes, clear. Now, you are rolling your eyes, but you are not changing your position or your location, right? So that is a movement. Now what about a locomotion? Now locomotion means if we are moving, okay? If we are moving any part of our body and there is a change in location and position of the organism that is called Locomotion. So that is the basic difference. Okay. Now I have already moved a few steps, right? So I have changed my position as well as I have changed my location. So that is locomotion. Okay. So this uh, the, the difference between the movement and locomotion. Uh, please note it down the points. Okay. This is very important. Okay. Now we'll discuss about the human body. Okay, so students, human body, okay? Human body. Now, when we discuss about the movement in human body, it is because of the bones and muscles present, right? Because of the human skeleton. Now, this human skeleton is a framework, okay? It's a framework. Now, this is very important because it gives us the structure. It gives us the shape. Clear. It supports our body, right? And it protects the 
the very important thing is it protects the internal organs. Clear? Now, this is very important. It protects the delicate internal organs. Now, see, our brain is very delicate, right? And our, so our brain is enclosed inside the R. We have this skull, okay? We have this skull bone here. So in this part, our brain is enclosed, clear? Now, even in the rib cage, in the rib cage, we'll see that uh, the heart and the lungs are enclosed, clear? Now, even uh, in the backbone, okay? In the backbone, the spinal cord is enclosed, clear? Now, even inside the bones, you'll see a fluid, soft fatty acids, okay? So that produces, with, that is a bone marrow, which produces uh, red blood cells and the white blood cells. So now our, our, uh, our in human body, okay, the skeleton, this plays a very important role. Now, see, uh, we cannot bend, we cannot, our bones cannot be bent, right? Our bones cannot be bent. You cannot bend uh, any of your bones, right? So our human body have joints, okay? Have joints on certain parts and all the joints are not similar, clear? Some are flexible, some have just one direction and some are, uh, some can be twisted, clear? Some we can just turn. So all the human bones, uh, it's not bendable, but we have certain joints, okay? We have a joints where uh, this bone, uh, these bones are joined together, clear? So we are going to study, uh, we'll start from the skull, okay? We'll start from the skull. So my dear students, this skull bone, okay? This skull bone is uh, very important. Like I said, it enclosed the brain, okay? Brain. Now, uh, I have discussed about the joint, right? Joint. Now, please keep this in mind. Six joint, okay? Six joint. So we have different joints in our body, right? So one such type of joint is fixed joint, okay? Now this fixed joint is present in the human skull here, okay? Now the skull, uh, it is, we have eight bones, okay? We have eight bones that is interlocked, interlocked. So that means uh, they are joined but they are not movable, okay? They are fixed. They are joined, but they are not movable. That's why we are calling it as a fixed joint. And in the human, uh, in the human sc uh, skull, the only part that is movable would be the lower jaw. Clear? The lower jaw. This is the only part which is movable. Clear? Now, you have to know the name of the joint which is present in the human skull, that is fixed joint. Clear? And if you are asked uh, what type of bones is present in the human skull, then we have flat bones, okay? Flat bones. Clear? Flat bones. So, uh, like, as you all know, and it's, as it is mentioned in your textbook, uh, human skeleton, it is composed of 206 bones, okay? 206 bones. Okay, so now students, uh, we have completed, we have discussed about the skull. Now let's discuss about the rib cage, okay? The rib cage. Okay, so students, next one is rib cage, okay? Rib cage. Now, rib cage, you will find something like this, right? So we have a 12 bow shape, okay? It's a bow shape rib cage. Now this is considered to be very important because uh, our the heart and the lungs are enclosed in this rib cage. Okay. Now uh, one very important thing is during the respiration, okay? This 
ribcage plays a very important role here. So the heart and the lungs are enclosed in this cage. Okay, now this rib cage here, it is also joined with the chest bone, clear? It's also uh, joined with the chest bone and the backbone, clear? So now next we are going to discuss about the backbone. The backbone. Now the backbone, uh, you can just touch and you can just feel it, okay? It's made up of 33 small bones, okay? Small bones, which is known as vertebrae. Vertebrae, clear? Vertebrae. Now, the, the first two part of the vertebrae is attached with the skull, okay? The first two part of the vertebrae is attached with the skull. And the last one, okay, the, the last one is just attached with the backbone, okay, backbone. That's why it is also known as floating. I think I'll start from backbone. Backbone. Because this is the same topic with class five and give me a second. From the backbone, okay. Okay, so students, we are done with the rib cage. The third one would be the backbone, okay. Backbone. Now, students, this backbone is composed of, is made up of 33 small bones that is known as vertebrae. Okay, vertebrae. That is known as vertebrae. Clear? Now, there is a joint present in all these uh, vertebrae. If there is no joint present in this vertebrae, then you know, your backbone will be stiff, okay? So you will not be able to bend, right? You'll not be able to bend or you'll not be able to do your regular work. So we have a joint present in our backbone, okay? We have a joint present in the backbone. Okay, so students, the first two part of our vertebrae is attached with the skull, okay, skull. And the joint, the joint which connects our skull and our backbone, it's a pivot joint, okay, pivot joint. So you have to keep this in mind, okay. So we have, uh, we have, I have already discussed about a fixed joint, that is uh, the first type of joint. Now the second joint, we have already discussed now, that is pivot joint, okay, pivot joint. Okay, so here we have discussed about the backbone, and the backbone is known as spine. Okay, spine. Now we will discuss about our arm bone and the, the shoulder, okay? We'll discuss about the arms and about the feet, okay? Okay, so students, the next one, we'll discuss about the forelimb and the hind limb, okay? Now, the forelimb, that is the uh, upper part, okay? That is ab ab about our hand and arms, okay? This is attached to the spine, okay? This is attached to the spine. Now, through a joint that is known as ball and socket joint. Ball and socket joint. Clear? Students, see, uh, the first type of joint we have studied that is fixed joint. Now this is pivot joint is second, and this one, the third one, keep in mind, that is ball and socket joint, okay? So we are studying everything together. We are studying the body parts as well as the joint, clear? So like I said, this is the topic which you have already studied in details in class five, clear? So I'm just going like, in, uh, I'm just giving you a summary, a quick summary about this uh, human skeleton, clear? Now. The joint which is present in the forelimb, uh, which connects to your spine, is ball and socket joint. And 
even in our hin limb, okay, even in our hin limb, uh, the joint that is present is the same ball and socket joint, okay? So our feet and our hand is the only one when, uh, which we can rotate, okay? See, I can rotate, right? So why, why I'm able to rotate my hand is because there is a ball and socket joint present. Clear? Uh, even in the hind limb, even in the hind limb, the ball and socket joint is present, okay? And that is attached to the hip girdle, okay? Hip girdle or pelvic girdle as well, okay? Or pelvic, uh, pelvic girdle. So now, four limb attached to the spine through ball and socket joint, hind limb attached to, uh, attach, is attached to the hip girdle, clear? Okay, so students, we are done with this ball and socket joint. Clear? Now we'll talk about the hinge joint, okay? The hinge joint, hinge joint. Since we are discussing about the forelimb and the hind limb, now we also have another joint, okay? The ball and socket joint is present here, right? So now the hinge joint, so that will be the fourth type of joint, the hinge joint, okay? So hinge joint is present here, okay? Hinge joint is present here. Now hinge joint is also present in our finger, okay? Hinge joint is also present in our finger. Now hinge joint is also present in the toes, okay, in the toes. So uh, you remember in the forelimb, okay, in the forelimb and the hind limb, we have two types of joint, ball and socket joint, and we have the hinge joint. And this hinge is like the hinge that you have at the door, okay, at the door. Now, this one allows only uh, one type of direction, okay, in just one direction, clear? One direction. Now, our fingers, okay, our fingers, this is made up, it's, a, it's made up of carpals, okay? It's a combination of bones that is known as carpals. So keep this in mind. Okay, so students, this hinge joint, uh, in this hinge joint, what you have to remember is the parts where this hinge joint, where uh, only one direction is applicable, clear? So I'll write here, okay? Elbow, finger, And toes. These are, uh, these are the four points which you have to remember. Okay. Okay. So, uh, students, we have discussed about uh, all the four joints which are present in the uh, human skeleton and which which is mentioned in your text. Okay. Uh, we have discussed about the skull. We have discussed about the rib cage. We have discussed about the backbone or spine. Clear. And we also have discussed about the arm limb and the hind limb, okay? Now, see, apart from the bones and the muscles which are present in our human skeleton, there is also some additional parts, okay? Additional parts in our uh, skeleton, that is, in our bones, that is cartilage, okay? C-A-R-T-I-L-A-G-E, cartilage, okay? Now, what is this cartilage? Now, let's do one activity, okay? Now, uh, everyone, this one is air. So suppose if this is your ear, okay? The lower one is very soft, right? So there, that one is an air lobe, right? This one is an air lobe. But here, if you touch this one, okay? Now, you can touch, uh, you, if you, you can bend this upper one, right? You, you can bend this upper one. So that is known as cartilage, okay? Cartilage. Since, it can be bent, can be, it is soft, okay? It can, it can be bent and it is soft. And uh, it is not a bone, it is not a muscle, it is a cartilage, which is present in the upper side of the air, okay? In our human air. In human air. Clear? Now, uh, one activity which is mentioned in your textbook regarding the muscle contraction, which I want all of you to try is, what you can do is you can just do like this, clear, 
okay, and you can lift your lower arm up and just touch uh, the thumb, okay? Just take the thumb like this and you touch your shoulder like this. And the other hand, okay? The other hand, you just touch like this. Clear? So this is the muzzle, clear? And this is the contraction. So this is the activity which is mentioned in your textbook, okay? Contraction. Okay, so uh, students, the first part of this chapter, that is uh, body movement, uh, like I said, it's a, the first part is about the humans, okay? So it is same like what you have studied in class five. Now in the next class, we are going to discuss about the body movement in other animals where I have already mentioned the names, right? Uh, earthworm, snail, snake, fish, bird, and cockroach. So we'll study about their movement in details in the next class. Thank you so much.